Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. And welcome again to Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner, where we talk about the stuff that really is important and the stuff that will make your race car go fast. Today, in this edition of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner, I want to talk to you about a really, really handy little tool that you can use to set up your race car. And that tool is damper ratios, and more importantly, how to use them. Now, what we're going to be discussing is that the, of all the tools that I use in my intellectual toolbox to basically set up a race car and to understand what it's actually doing, the damper ratio is a very, very, very powerful tool. So, what we're going to be discussing in this particular section of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner is basically um, we're going to d define spring and damper rates because the bedrock of being able to use this is actually really nailing down basically what your spring and damper rates actually are. Then we're going to talk a little bit about um, the quarter car model and how to construct it. Now, in reality, obviously a, r a, a race car is obviously a four cornered vehicle, but once you understand the quarter car model, it's amazing just how far you can actually push this simple little approximation. We're going to analyse how it works, and then we're going to talk about how to define damper ratio, and more importantly, how to use it. So, let's get going. Okay, first things first, let's talk about um, defining spring rates. Now, basically, a spring rate is basically the change in um, spring force, uh, the change in um, uh, spring force over change, it's, it's the change in spring force over the change um, over a given um, uh, linear distance. So basically, so uh, so it could be we could have an air. This applies for a standard coilover damper unit. It applies for an air spring, etc., etc. All we're looking for, as you can see in our little graph below, is simply the change in slope of force over displacement. That is our spring rate, and that's a really key concept. Now, fortunately. In most springs that you'll deal with, they're actually linear. So in reality, um, our curve here is actually a um, straight uh, is a um, is a straight line. But sometimes, if particularly if we're dealing with bump rubbers, air springs, or springs that are non-linear, we really need to define the spring rate as that instantaneous tangent of our curve at that particular uh, point uh, at that particular point in time. Let me also say that what we're after here is we're actually after basically what the wheel rate is vis-a-vis -vis what this spring rate is at the wheel. And we'll talk about basically defining that at another time. Damping rates. This is probably one of the most misunderstood and misused um, components in all of race car engineering analysis. Now, basically, like with... Um, Spring uh, with spring rate, a damping rate is basically ch uh, the, uh, defined as the change in force over the change in velocity of our spring damper unit. Now, the way that um, uh, we define that is actually really, really simple. We just simply take our damper force versus peak velocity graph, and what we uh, our peak damper force versus velocity graph, and we simply look at the rate at our damping uh, at our at a damping velocity of interest. That is our damping um, velocity. Now, here's the thing, and here's probably, if I could put my finger on one of the most misunderstood things about dampers, is the whole thing about damping, uh, is the whole thing about damping rate. This equation, C is equal to change in force on change in velocity, is the thing that drives damping. And indeed, I have lost count of the number of times I have seen damper curves that clicked with, well, we've gone um, uh, this high speed setting, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, where the da uh, where basically the high speed rate has been absolutely identical. This curve, uh, um, our curve here, has basically been translated off. And I'm here to tell you guys that when you've got a curve that is simply being translated up to the same slope, all it's doing is adding spring preload, and that's a really, really important thing to get your head around. Now, in terms of typical damping rate numbers, you should be expecting. Particularly for race dampers, you're looking anywhere in the order of um, 3,000 newtons per meters per second. Particularly, this is for high-speed settings, up to about 20,000. I've even seen numbers in the order of about 25, 30,000 newtons per meters per second for the low-speed section of the damper. Now, 
let's put this into practice. And the way we're going to put this into the practice is our first protocol is to analyze our humble quarter car spring damper model. Now, the reason that we want to do this is that basically this quarter car spring damper model is the bedrock of which we base a lot of analysis on. And, it's a, and as I said before, it is amazing how far you can push this old war horse. So basically what we've got is we've got our sprung mass MB, we've got our, um, uh, our wheel rate, our spring rate, which is called KB, our damping rate CB, our mass of the unsprung tyre MT, and basically our tyre spring rate KT. If we wanted to be anal, I should probably really throw in there a tyre damping rate, but in reality, tyre damping rates are very, very small. So this is a pretty good approximation. So working through the equations of motion of um, the quarter car, basically all that we're doing is we're basically summing the, damp the spring and damping forces for our sprung mass, and basically all that we're doing for um, the acceleration for the unsprung mass of the tyre is basically summing our spring damper force, which is basically pushing the tyre down, and, then, and the natural spring rate of the tyre that's pushing it back up. Now, our first party trick here for the quarter car model is that basically the effective spring rate is effectively um, the spring rate is the, is the wheel spring rate multiplied by the tyre spring rate divided by KB plus KT. What the hell does that mean in plain English? Well, what that means in plain English is that effectively we've got two springs in parallel to each other, and the effective spring rate is one on the spring is one on the body spring right plus one on the tire spring right. Now the reason this is such a powerful tool is it basically tells you that whatever the minimum of either your um, wheel spring rate is or your tire spring rate, that's it. That's the most you can possibly get in terms of um, spring the spring support for our quarter car, and this has some really really big implications. Now to quote the Joker from Batman. I am going to show you a magic trick. Okay, let's consider the case where the wheel, sp uh, where uh, the wheel, uh, where the body spring rate is much less than the tire spring rate, and the mass of the tire is much lower than the mass of the body. Now, at this point, we can pull, uh, we can pull the following approximation um, out. Basically, the mass of the body is just simply the um, sum of the uh, tire uh, is simply uh, the sum of the spring force of the tire and the, sp and the damper force of the body and this time we're only looking at x of the body x dash of the body for um uh, uh, for the interested viewer on this vis-a-vis -vis, um formula sae students engineering university students that means you um i would invite you to go through the uh, the actual approximation process here's the thing though now that we've gotten into, into such simple terms, we can do a little, Laplace a little Laplace transformation of this. And so basically what we find when we go through and we crunch the numbers is that we have the characteristic equation of this is S squared plus CB on MB times S plus KB on MB. Now, here's where our magic tricks come 